Bus Mob. Happy Wednesday. Let me back up my camera because every time it goes live, it just zooms right in. It's really weird. All right, cool. All right. Hope everyone's having a good Wednesday, middle of the week, two o'clock. Probably doing these, I realize, but these will live inside of the main group so you can watch them later. So don't think if you miss this, too bad. That's not it. I get the questions ahead of time, so if you asked a question, you can find the video and you can watch it whenever it's convenient for you. We'll also be uploading these to Instagram now, so if you happen to miss it in the Facebook group, you can check it out on Bus Mob's Instagram, which is just Bus Mob. Um, but a couple announcements before we get started. I have some questions you guys submitted, but I also just want to let you guys know tomorrow on Bus Mob's Instagram, I will be interviewing Dr. Fredman who is our Amelia Aesthetic St. Louis surgeon. And I'm gonna be asking him all kinds of questions you guys have submitted. So I'm excited about that. That's at 12 o'clock tomorrow Eastern. And if you're like, you know what, Jenny, that's cool, but I can't remember all these dates you're throwing at me. I get it. You can go to busmob.com. We have an events page that I keep very up to date um, with all of our future lives that we're gonna do. So let's say you can't pop in on tomorrow's, you can join the next one. Those will also live inside the group, so I'll download it and make sure you guys can watch it here on Instagram and YouTube and all over the place. So if you miss it, don't worry. I save everything. <laughs> and the last announcement is, um, oh, today, well, I, this happened like four hours ago. So today we did a skincare live inside Bus Mob skincare group. So if you didn't know, there is a Bus Mob skincare group. And I went live in there for a live treatment. Uh, I did Botox because I thought, wouldn't it be cool? I mean, we've done it on Instagram before, like doing little takeovers with treatments and stuff. Like, why, why do we not do this inside of Facebook? So I went live in the skincare group today with Nurse Jess at Amelia Aesthetics Raleigh. And we kind of walked through the entire thing, areas she was going to treat, why she used what, how much, everything like that. And it was a lot of fun. Again, <laughs> It, it's going to live in the group, but the music was playing so loud in the room, Facebook picked up on it as like a copyright infringement for the video, even though it was just background music. So it got shut down and we had to go live again, like right in the middle of it. So you're probably going to see part two because they won't let part one roll because Justin Bieber or whoever was singing in the background. <laughs> so sorry about that. But the next one, we're going to do another one in December. Um, on filler. So just stay tuned for that. And if you didn't know, yes, we have a Bus Mob skincare group. And I'll put the, that in the comments too, so you guys can check that out. Uh, groups slash Bus Mob skincare. There you go. All right. So over the past week, I've been asking you ladies if you have any questions on Instagram and inside the Facebook group. So I got a couple. But if you guys have any questions as I'm talking and answering these questions, feel free to throw them in the comments because I have it right here pulled up. I can see any comments that come in and I can answer anything you guys have live. And if I can't, I will go find the answer for you. And I'll be the first person to say, that's a great question. I have no idea. So don't, I'm not going to BS nobody. Okay. So the first question I got is on emotional recovery after surgery, which is a really cool question. So after surgery, a lot of us will go through like what's called the booby blues or like an emotional roller coaster because like we just had surgery, which is a huge deal to the body, right? It's a very physical trauma to the body. So your body's having to repair and recover. And it takes a toll on us mentally because in our minds, we're like, we feel like we should be able to bounce back quickly. Like, why, why are we making dinner for the family anymore? Why? You know, and then we get in our heads and then we don't relax, right? So things to do to prepare for that in advance, like let's say you're about to have surgery, you've read some stories, you don't want, you want to be as proactive as possible, right? I would recommend, one, getting on Netflix. This is what I did. Because <laughs> I, I tend to be very sensitive to even just like hormonal fluctuations. Like I'm very sensitive and in tune to my body. So for me, when I have surgery, I get on Netflix and I try to find some funny shows. I get them lined up in the queue. Usually it's Schitt's Creek because who doesn't like that show? And if you don't like it, please don't tell me because I, I won't understand. But find some funny shows or something you've been looking forward to watching and don't watch it until you're recovering. 
because it'll feel kind of like a treat. Also, I tell people like write yourself a letter. It sounds a little lame, but it's really, really not. And it'll help a lot if you need it. So before you have surgery, write yourself like why you want to have surgery. Take photos, take a lot of before photos so that when you're recovering, you can look at those before photos and be like, okay, I remember why I did this. And then you can look in the mirror and be like, okay, I know they're not going to look like this forever, you know, but I have these before photos. I remember my why. And you're just going to have to trust the process in that. So those are two that are helpful. Also, get some of your favorite snacks. I mean, try to get some healthy ones because we want the pipes to start moving quicker downstairs, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, get some like healthy snacks, some fun snacks, like pick a meal that you really want for like when you're recovering. So for my ex-husband, I swear, every time he was sick or had surgery or anything, he wanted meatloaf and mashed potatoes, right? <laughs> so everybody has like that thing. For me, like I really, I love these vegan carnita tacos. So when I had surgery two years, yeah, two years ago in 2020, <laughs> like the first thing I thought of were those stupid tacos. And so when I got home and I was recovering, like I knew like no matter how frustrated I am, no matter how like uncomfortable I am, I'm going to have these tacos. And it just, it helped me be excited about something. So being able to find something you're excited about and carry that through your recovery will really help with that keeping a positive mental attitude and just carrying you through the process. So those are some suggestions, long-winded, but I hope that helps. And I'm moving on to the next question. Okie dokie. Um, this girl asked, if I get an implant exchange to smaller implants, like 150 to 200 cc's, which is a pretty small implant. I used to have one, but it's like literally just pretty small. Um, will I need to get a lift? So this is a interesting question. So this girl is wanting to downsize her implants to around 150 to 200, which are pretty small. Will she need a lift? My first question would be, I don't really know how big you are now. So if you're going from like 300 to 200, no. But if you're going from like 850 to 150, you're probably going to have some loose skin, a little excess skin. But that's something that once you're in surgery, like they're gonna know once they pull that implant out how much skin needs to be removed, if any at all. Sometimes the skin can retract a little bit. Um, like let's say it's not a huge drastic change inside. Sometimes you don't need a lift. Your body will just need a little extra time. But if you're gonna do a drastic, like you're going from a pretty large implant to a pretty small implant, you might be looking at needing a lift just to keep your nipple placement where you want it to stay and to really just tighten, firm up the skin around like around the implant and breasts. Um, there's another question that kind of, there was another one, I don't wanna jump ahead, but sometimes you do need a lift if you go smaller. That's just one of the things, unless, because you're, skin, you're stretching out your skin, right? To go bigger with implants, you take that big implant out, it's just an empty space. So going into it thinking you might have to have a lift to achieve the goals with a smaller implant is something you might just need to keep in the front front and center of your mind. It's a possibility. Okie dokie. Next question. This lady is starting out at a 32 B C cup. Uh, what do I need to get to be a double D? So anytime I hear a question like this, I get the heart behind the question but I wanna reframe it in a way so you're not focused on cup size. Let's focus on the look you're trying to achieve because a double D on me might look completely different than a double D on somebody else, right? Because our rib cages are different. A 36 double D does not look like a 30 double D. It's just very different. So trying to remove the language of cup size will help tremendously with your surgeon and with you looking and discovering what size is best for you. So, what does that mean, Jenny? Let me take my jacket off. It's getting toasty in here. Ugh, okay. What I mean is, so let's say you go to Bus Mob's Goal Finder. Um, there we go. So Bus Mob's Goal Finder is where you can go to find your goal photo or your wish pick. And you can put in your height, your weight, your stats. And that's a pretty solid way of finding someone with your body type like your height, your weight, your if you know your chest measurements, and seeing different size CCs of implants on their body. 
So you'll notice it's not heavy on cup size. A lot of women focus on CCs because like I said with cup size, even if we don't have the same height and weight and everything, CCs will look completely different. And you may have seen that in bus mob. Like I have a friend who has 700 CCs. I have 650. Mine look enormous compared to her 700s because my body, my body type or style, whatever. I don't know what was coming out of my mouth. My body is a different shape. My chest is wider. I have a different profile of implants. I had breast tissue to start with. So there's all these factors that you can't really compare apples to apples when it comes to boobs to boobs, right? So keep that in mind. Everyone's CCs look different. Everyone's cup size looks different. So how do I find my size, Jenny? Good question. So like I said, everyone's anatomy is different. Everyone's lifestyle is different. Everyone starts with a different size cup. So like your breast tissue is different. So what I would focus on is finding women who have a look that you like and then compiling that. So getting four to five photos, especially in Goal Finder, because you can create like little folders called collections inside a Goal Finder with people who have the similar body type as you, and you can see different CCs on them and be like, okay, well, this girl has my body type. I think I like the 350s. Oh, she has a similar body type in 600. That looks a little too big for me. And being able to just kind of get an idea of what you want to see in the mirror will really take a lot of the pressure off of you to figure out what cup size you want to be. Because let's say in your head, you want to be a double D, but you show your surgeon some photos and he, he'd be like, that's not going to be a double D on you. You like the look, but you're going to be disappointed if you go to Victoria's Secret and in your mind, it's double D and you're not a double D, then you're going to be frustrated. But if you go into it with, this is the look I want, and then you're post-op and you have the look you want, who cares what cup size it is? Because you're going to see in the mirror what you want. So all that to say, don't get hung up on cup size. Don't get too hung up on comparing CCs from one person to the other because they do look so different on everyone's body. So go to Goal Finder, plug in your stats, and you'll get a way better idea of the look that you'll achieve with those CCs on a similar body type. Laura Dean, Goal Finder was such a help for me. Good. I'm so excited to hear that. Yes, I mean, there's truly nothing else out there like Goal Finder. And that's why we built it because, God, was it 10 years ago when I had my breast dog? 12 years ago. I had my first breast augmentation 12 years ago. And it was hard to find after photos that wasn't like on a surgeon's website. So you're like, oh, so these must be your best photos, right? I mean, who wouldn't put their best photos on their website? So there's already a bias there. Um, like looking at, I mean, a lot of us had to go down the porn rabbit hole of like, oh, let's find a stripper or a porn star that I like her boobs because there's not a whole lot of boobs out there, but still you're left with like, well, she's probably 90 pounds, five, seven, and I'm not either of those. So it, and Goal Finder has taken a lot of the guesswork out of knowing what you could look like with implants. And so is things like Vectra, like 3D imaging where you can, a lot of offices now have 3D imaging where either your consult or pre-op, you'll go in and they can scan your body and pull it up on a computer screen and simulate on your breast, your body, different size implants, different shapes, different types. It's really, really cool. A lot of people get hung up on Vectra. So I would say if, you, if you're getting a 3D image, just really focus on the side view because that's where you're going to see the, like your projection so you're going to see more of like the side because in the front, your arms are like this, your boobs are spread apart. It looks kind of funny. I'll be honest, like no one likes the front view. The side view is where it's at. So if you're getting a vector image or a 3D image of any sort, really focus on the side profile because that's really going to help you decide how much projection you like on your body. So there's that. <laughs> Um, and those of you that are watching, if you used Goal Finder and you're post-op, I would really encourage you to upload your photos to Goal Finder for like the next wave of women who are looking for afters because uh, some of us have different body types that we can't find on Goal Finder. And I hear that sometimes from women like, I went to Goal Finder, but no one had my height and weight. Like if that's you, then I would really encourage you to upload those photos afterwards because someone was in 
someone's in your shoes right now looking for those photos. So if you feel comfortable, you don't have to show your face if you don't want to. You don't have to use nipple covers. You can if you want. You can be clothed. It can be a lot of different things. So I would really appreciate if you guys wanted to upload your photos and then you did. <laughs> yes, Jesse, that was you. Yeah, I'm, and I think we're lacking a lot of tall women and I can always encourage more over the muscles because we have a lot of unders, but more over the muscle implants, um, smaller and larger. There's a lot of three to four hundreds. We need more tall photos and we, um, yeah. So, I mean, there's a variety of things we need and it's not just breast implants either. And I think a lot of people think that when they hear bust mob, um, it, bust mob started out as breast implants back in the day. But it is completely morphed to be anything plastic surgery, anything breast and body, anything like really just body transformation. It can be face, it can be skincare, it can be filler, it can be a tummy tuck. So in Goal Finder, there's also um, a place to upload tummy tuck photos. So if you got a tummy tuck, you can upload those. Breast reduction, we need breast reductions. We need just breast lifts. Um, but there's a lot of like breast augs, breast lift, and AUG together, a lot of mommy makeovers. So if you haven't already, it's a really, really cool tool just to check out, upload your photos, give me all the stats, that would be great. Um, over the muscle gal, obsessed and like five to see, so many women are getting over the muscle implants now. So now of course I'm like, hmm, well I've had under the muscle and I've had saline and silicone and moderates and high profiles, what? And then I'm like, no, no, no. I don't think it'd be right for my anatomy personally, but man, y'all's overs look great and it's making me really jealous. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. That was me, but I took the ones that I wanted to look like and showed Dr. Pyle. Yes. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, Jesse. Paying it forward. Okay. Over the muscle. All right. Greta has over the muscle implants too. It's funny. Like she has overs. I have unders. She has silicone. I used to have saline. So we were like complete opposites in implant worlds, which was funny. And I don't know that she has high profile, but I have high profile. Okay, next question. Saline or silicone for large sized implants, wanting to wanting a really big natural look. So when it comes to the conversation between saline and silicone, I'm pretty pretty objective about it um, because I've had saline implants and I think when anyone hears saline in a conversation it's immediately like no you want silicone and it's like well some people want saline and I think it's it's a fair argument for both <laughs> um, I have silicone now but um, for me personally I've always liked having larger implants and I've had large salines and large silicones. So I can kind of speak from my personal experience on this. I had um, enough breast tissue to cover the implant that it didn't really matter. It didn't, it was a huge deal which one I chose, saline or silicone, because I still had breast tissue covering the implant. So salines, yes, can tend to be more firm because some surgeons will overfill the implant, like the shell making it more taut, but it decreases the rippling around the edges. So they're a little bit more firm right out the gate if you overfill them, which I always have because I didn't want to see rippling. But I had enough breast tissue at a B cup to cover my saline implant. So it's I still felt the squishy first, right? My breast tissue on top. But I will say when I laid on my chest, like I did a lot of yoga back in the day. Not so much now. Story for another day. Um, <laughs> But I used to do a lot of yoga, so I would lay on my chest, and like salines would not give very much. So it felt like I was laying on like two grapefruits. So I swapped to silicone two years ago, and I've noticed same amount of breast tissue covering the implant, right? But they are softer, and I do feel like they move a little more naturally, like just you know around in its pocket. And when I lay on my stomach, they do smush more. So they get, they are softer because I know my body weight can smush them and my salines did not. So to answer your question, 
for a larger size implant, which is you get saline or silicone, if you want a big natural look, if you're really, I don't know how much breast tissue you have to start with, but if you don't have any, it's going to look more unnatural with saline, more natural with silicone. Placement also helps with that. Um, so if I were you and I maybe didn't know which one to choose, I would probably lean more towards silicone because you have more options in like variability and range of different types of silicones you can use. Whereas saline, you just have that one and done kind of piece. And if you're wanting a natural look, you have much more creative control over a silicone implant than you really do with the saline. So that's where my, my head goes, but it is really truly a conversation with your surgeon, like letting them know, Hey, I want to go big, but I want to look natural. I want it to look soft. I don't want this stuck on look. I don't want them to be too defined because that can make him decide a different profile for you. Um, a different placement of implant for you, not just saline or silicone. So it's a conversation, but Based on what you said, if you want really big and natural, probably a silicone. All right. Those of you that are popping on, I'm doing a live, obviously. I'm just answering some questions y'all submitted previously, but you can ask at any time. Throw them in the comments because I can see all the comments that are popping up. Okay, next question you guys asked was, um, is there a risk for going too small other than personal regret? That's an interesting question and one that I don't think anyone's ever asked. Um, yes, people get booby greed, but that's not a reason to not choose a small size. I mean, some people want, <laughs> I, I, one of my friends would call it a fit tit. And I was like, hmm, didn't know that was a word. So I Googled it and it's, it's a thing. So people, different people want different things. However, let's say you have a wide chest and you have some breast tissue to start with, but you want a small implant you might lose that small implant in your anatomy if it's not wide enough or if it doesn't project enough. It might, you might not even know, like you might not even really notice it and it won't fit the breast. So that's something to consider. So when it, I wouldn't call it a risk, but if you're gonna spend seven to $8,000 on breast implants and you choose something really small that might get lost in your body, you're probably gonna be more disappointed than anything. So again, going back to, well, what is too small for you? Like, what does that look like? That opens the door for a conversation, you know, like show me what you like, show me what a small implant looks to you or show me what is not small to you. So we know like where the hard no is and where, okay, let's start here conversation. And Again, going back to like goal finder and 3D imaging and even sizers, like try like those things are really like good tools to help you feel confident in the size you choose before ever having surgery. So definitely take advantage of those things. And that's another thing, like let your surgeon know, I don't wanna be too big and I would prefer to be smaller than too large. That's a lot of people will say like, well, I have an option between two or three different CCs it's like, okay, well, would you be more frustrated if you were too small or too big? And let, let's start there. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, one more question. Then it's wrap-up time. Okay. The, my doctor said I picked the size of my implants at the pre-op with sizers. And after that, he picks projection. 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 Isn't that backwards? Different surgeons do different things. Um, I know for me, well, not for me, but from I didn't get to do vector 3D imaging, but a lot of times during a consultation, the first thing you'll do is a vectra or a 3D image just to get you to see what could be and what you like, because that will tell a surgeon a lot too. Like let's say you don't like a lot of projection with your 3D image, then him going to like, picking out the profile, he's going to pick a profile implant that doesn't have a lot of projection, but it's more left to right. It's lower profile, but wider. So I don't think there's a problem with one being done before the other. I think it's probably a good idea that you kind of see what size you like and then go from there as to what projection would be best. Because let's say you do the 3D imaging 
and you don't like a lot of projection, then he's not going to recommend a high profile or an ex ultra high profile, right? Or if you prefer something a little bit more natural where it's like lower but wider, you want side boob, then that conversation and knowing like how big you want to go, what it looks like, then he can measure you and do all those things. I'm pretty sure all of my breast dogs have been, we talk about size first, and then we had the exam where I was measured and all that stuff, all those things were done for the purpose of choosing the profile. I never chose my own profile. Some people get that option, I've noticed in Bus Mob, but I always like the surgeon to have control over that because there's so much that go into it. It's like the height of the implant, the width of the implant, how much projection there is. And those things vary when the CCs inside change. So it's more complicated than I think we give them credit for. Um, but regardless of what order you're being sized in, I think it's okay. Alrighty. Hi, Gina. I am just wrapping up. <laughs> All right, ladies. It's been real. Don't forget, tomorrow I am interviewing Dr. Fredman, who is our Amelia Aesthetic St. Louis surgeon, and I'll be interviewing him on Bus Mob's Instagram. So make sure you check that out. It's at 12 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. If you miss it, don't worry. I will be downloading it from Instagram and throwing it in here so you guys can watch it at any time. So I want you to feel like if you miss it, ah, it's okay. You still have the opportunity to ask him questions. You just go to the events section of um, our Facebook group and you can go to his little um, event and you can throw your comments in there, throw your questions in there, and I'll make sure to ask him tomorrow. Other than that, I will see you ladies next Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern if I don't see you tomorrow for tomorrow's live. And I hope everyone has a great week and weekend. And personal note, Let's all take down our Halloween decorations at some point. Okay, just had to say it.